rest and restoration, but really inviting yourself to kind of take a moment or two just to be present in your own body. Almost like you'd invite somebody into your home and just have a good conversation with them or you invite somebody out for lunch. Remember the good old days? And just take some several deep breaths and feel the body just kind of opening up to the breath. Begin at your feet and begin to notice just the heels, the calves, how they're touching the ground, moving your attention up to the masses of your legs and your hips, your ribs, your shoulders, and your head. And taking a couple of nice, long, focused breaths and just feel how the head rests back into the ground. The head affected most significantly by the shoulder girdle. So notice where the head is laying on the ground if the head feels heavily weighted or tilted off to one side. Notice as you take that breath in, if you feel that there's any pressure or tension in the neck or the upper part of the shoulders. Taking your attention now, let your head drop to your left shoulder and then to your right. And notice if there's any pulling or any other tension. Like for me, I have a little bit of a pull on my left rib cage when I turn my head to the right. My shoulders seem level, but my body's kind of reacting to that rotation. Shoulders are back. Notice if the more of the weight is up towards the top of the shoulder or if you feel a more even weight distributed down towards where the natural bra line would be. Taking a deep breath. Notice if your arm weight is evenly weighted to the ground or if one arm feels more elevated than another. Taking your attention now to your diaphragm. Breathe to the width of the rib wall. Notice if the breath feels evenly inflating on either side. Notice if you have that big back arch, almost a wailing back arch, that your back feels like it's arched off the ground down into your pelvis. And then the third area that stuck stress just loves to live is down into the pelvis. Notice if the pelvis feels offset, off center. Maybe the pelvis feels arched off the ground, like you're sitting towards your butt cheeks or you're sitting down into your pelvis. Ideally, you'd be more level in your pelvis. And then notice if your hamstrings feel like they're touching the ground or feel they're elevated. And then calves and then to your feet. Notice if your feet feel turned out evenly east and west, or if they feel like they're more pointed towards the wall out in front of you. And then divide the body in half and notice the balance of the right and left sides of the body. And after you take another deep breath or so, just come into that body and just kind of take a nice scan and just kind of thank yourself for just kind of being present in this space, allowing yourself to just connect into and with your body. Slide your feet in so your shins are vertical. You're going to take your roller and you're going to place it underneath your hips. So you're going to lift your hips straight up and let's start with that. Just checking the pelvis to see where we're at. Making sure that the top of you place your index fingers right on top of that pelvis and then you slide the heel of the hand, the, the thumbs around the back side that you can feel the back of that SI joint as well as when you're there, can you reach down and just touch, just barely touch the, um, the base of the crease of the butt cheeks down there nice and low. From there, bring your right knee up nice and slow and bring your left knee up nice and slow placing both your hands just on the tops of your thighs 
So your fingers are just pointing over the tops of your knees. And then meet the pressure. Press your hands into your knees and your knees into your hands gently. Exhale, sink the rib cage down, but keep the pelvis level to the top of the roller. Breathe to the width of the rib wall. Slide your hands down onto the belly. Let the knees drop into the belly and then just begin to just breathe deep into the abdomen, feeling the belly rise and fall with your hands on the lower part of your belly. And then take your hands to either side of your hip and just see if you can just do a tuck and a tilt with your pelvis right on top of the roller. Now watch that you're not arching your back and sinking your rib cage, but just allow your pelvis to do the motion here. So tuck and tilt that pelvis. Try to keep your knees pointing straight up so your knees aren't rocking back and forth, but just that pelvis is moving. And this may be very stuck for you. It may be that you don't have a lot of motion. Everything else is going to do it, but we're going to reassess that when we come back around as well. From here, just allow the hands to slide back up the knees again, inhaling, meet that pressure, exhaling, keep that chin in, rib cage down, inhaling, exhaling, meet the pressure, hands into the knees and knees into the hands. Take the left hand off of the left knee, place the left hand on top of the right, and then slowly begin to lower the left foot down towards the ground and back up. You're meeting the pressure. You're pushing into the right knee with the right hand and the left as you're moving that left knee up and down. Foot just barely touches the ground and then gently comes back up. Two more, exhaling as you lower and or as you lift. And again, lowering that foot and come back up. Take both hands back to the top of the knees. Place your right hand on top of your left, meet that pressure, and begin to move just the right knee up and down. Notice as you drop that right foot towards the floor, do you feel any external rotation in the hip? Do you have less control on that right side than you did on the left? Use that deep breath, keep the ribs down, Shoulders away from the ears. One more time, lower that right foot and back up. Bring both hands back to your knees. Again, meet the pressure, arms are straight and begin to tuck and tilt the pelvis in a challenge. So this is called tuck and tilt challenge. You're keeping the shins or the thighs perpendicular as you're moving the pelvis underneath. So you're not letting the knees rock back and forth just tuck and tilt the pelvis. Watch that the rib cage isn't moving. You may actually have more movement now than you did when we first started. Go ahead and pause. Take a big deep breath. Exhale. Slide your hands down and begin a small circle. Just pelvic foot, um, SI joint to SI joint. So we'll move into the SI joint shear. Begin that circle nice and small and then start taking that circle a little bit bigger. Bumping your hip up against your hands on either side. Let the ribs drop. Keep the chin towards the sternum. Breathing, make the circle a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. Now begin to make the circle smaller again. Slowly bring that circle back to the midline and pause right in the center. Let's do marching. Just keep the chin in towards the sternum, the rib cage down. Alternately lower your right foot, then your left. Nice and even in the breath. And then bring those knees back to center and pause. Let's tilt both knees to the right and begin circling both knees simultaneously on the right side. Nice small circle on that SI joint. 
pause, lower and lift that right knee back and forth. So you're doing a little clamshell just on that right side. And then pause, bring those knees together. Both knees come back into center and then both knees over to the left side. And again, both knees circle around. Watch that the ribs aren't arching. And then pause and just a nice little clam. Drop that left knee open and close. Breathing even through the nose. And then pause. Bring both knees back into center. Let both knees drop to the chest. Give them a little hug, a little stretch for the lower back. Drop the left foot to the ground. Breathing and just feel that left knee pulling, going away, but draw that left heel towards the hamstring. At the same time, you're drawing the right knee towards the chest. So your left hand is moving up your left thigh as you're pulling your right knee into your chest. And then release, and again, pull that right knee in, press outward and pull the left heel in toward the hip. Not so much that it gives you a cramp, just allow that to happen. Press out as you pull in, one more time, press out as you pull in. Pause, take a nice release breath. Bring the left knee back into the chest. Drop the right foot to the ground. Again, your right hand is on your right thigh. Your left hand is on your left thigh and you're pulling that left knee into your chest. At the same time, slide as best you can your left hand, or sorry, your right hand on your right thigh, like you're just kind of giving it a nice good press or stroke through into the knee. As you pull that right heel towards the hamstring, draw the left knee into the chest. Breathing. Again, release just a little bit, exhale. Pull the left knee into the chest as you press your hand down or and or up towards the right knee. And then again, pull the left knee into the chest, press with that right hand up towards the knee. Last time, one more time, exhale. Press out with the right hand, pull in with the left. Take a big deep breath, inhale and exhale. Slowly bring both knees into the chest. Again, just let the chin drop. And again, let's drop the right foot to the ground, extend the left leg towards the ceiling. If you need to reposition the roller, do so. So I want you to start with that, that left leg straight up and then begin to lower the left, so the left and the right knees are almost in line with each other. And we're gonna go do a hip to heel stretch. So what ends up happening here is the pelvis can arch or, or drop. So I want you to really tuck that pelvis in, sink the rib cage down and get length out of the back of that left heel and through the leg. And then kind of point and press that heel away, not from the force of the toe, but from the movement at the back side of the leg. Breathing. So elongate that back end of the leg by dropping the tailbone down, breathing, keeping the ribs down, you may feel pull on the inner or outer thigh. And then pause. Take the leg up just above the right knee and cross the left leg over the right knee. At the same time, you cross the, the uh, underside. So the left leg is on top, the right knee is on the bottom. And then push that right, uh, sorry, the left leg out as you sink the left hip back. Press out and rotate that big toe down towards the ground. So the heel is going up towards the sky. So the left leg is reaching out, the heel is reaching up towards the sky, the big toe is pointing down, and you're sinking back. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So getting long on the outside, big toe to the ground, heel to the sky, cross the midline where the thighs meet. Pause, and then just bring that left knee into the chest and just pause for a second and then lower down. Second set will be a lot easier because it won't be so much semantics of what's going on. 
So you're going to bring that right knee into the chest. On top of the fact I'm trying to mirror for you, which gets a little confusing, my apologies. Bring that right knee into the chest, extend the right foot towards the ceiling, sink the hips down. So you're getting that elongation from the back of the leg. Keep the back from arching and then lower that right leg until you get the knees in alignment and then begin to press and pull the heel away from the butt cheek, away from that right hip. Keep sinking down into the roller. Press out, pull in, press out, pull in, rib cage down. One more time, press out, lift that right leg up, cross the right leg across the midline of the body, begin to turn the big toe down towards the, the left shoulder, press through the right heel, sink the hip back, pull the hip away from the heel, breathing, get that open on the outside of that, of that right hip. Again, sink and pull the ribs in, inhale, and exhale, bend that right knee, bring it into the chest. Once more, bring the left knee into the chest, both knees drop. Exhale, shh, and settle. Slide those knees right back over the hips again. Slide your hands up like your fingers are the sun, just cresting at the horizon. And again, try to tuck and tilt the pelvis. Notice if it's a little bit easier even still to move the pelvis, not the knees, but the pelvis and not the ribs, just move the pelvis. If it's still stiff, that's okay. If you're just moving towards more hydration, bend the knees into the chest again, and exhale. Shh. Drop the right foot and left foot onto the ground, lift the hips up, and take the roller out from underneath you nice and gently, extending both legs out. So let's do a real quick reassess. We actually did our assessment on the ground. Then we got up onto that roller and began to really work the pelvis, see if we can get some motion in there. Letting the arms drop by your side. A nice opposition or a nice um, direct change would be the pelvis level to the ground, more evenly loaded to the ground. But a really neat indirect change would be the weight of the head or the weight of the shoulders also being into the ground. Taking a deep breath, noticing the weight of the head. Take your attention into the shoulders. If the sh weight of the shoulders comes more down into the rib wall and less back arch. Now I'm gonna drop my head to the left and to the right, see if there's less pull on that, that left side for me and there's a little less pull. My pelvis feels very level. Hamstrings are feeling like they're touching the ground and feet feel like they're dropping east and west. Dividing the body in half, my body feels more even on the right and left side. Now, since we did a lot of hip work, if there's a lot of dehydration from your sitting today or anything like that, this could still feel like it's a work in progress. So let's continue on. Bring those knees into the chest. Roll yourself to one side and bring yourself up. So we're gonna start with that roller. We're gonna do the inner thigh glide and shear. So we're gonna start with that roller, lay back on your side. And remember, when we do that inner thigh, you wanna line up the nose and the top of the roller so you're not too far. And then lay onto your arms. So if you wanna sit up to watch me um, for the setup, do so. You're gonna take that roller and move it to arms distance away. So there's one side closer to you. Your body and the roller kind of make a V. And then you'll take your top knee, place it just over the roller. Your top hand or your front hand comes between your roller and your heart. So right in on the ground in the center. And then you're gonna to begin to move your shoulder and your hip at the same time. So your knee is not moving back and forth your body is directing the movement. So go ahead and lay back, move that roller to a V position, get that knee on top of the roller, take your hand right between the roller and your chest and begin to lower down onto the ground, your shoulder and your hip moving at the same time. Now here's a great way of speed hiding need so the slower you go in this, the more your leg is gonna settle into the roller. 
the faster you go, the more you're just going to kind of roll back and forth and probably use your hip too much. So the inner thigh, the interesting thing about the muscle on the inner thigh is it goes to the floor of the pelvis, which also goes into the reproductive organs, which also is part of the deep core muscles of the body. Breathing. Two more. And then you're going to pause, and then you're just going to bend and straighten that top knee. So the bottom leg is just getting to rest. Bend and straighten the top knee. And then pause. And then hold the roller and just kind of itch the knee up and down. It's like you're rubbing your inner thigh on the, on the roller. Make sure you're breathing. And then pause again. Good. From there, we're just going to take our knee up a little bit, move the roller so it's higher up on the inner thigh, and we're gonna do a second spot on that inner thigh. Now this spot may be a little bit more angry than that first spot. Just let it be. You can put your toe on the ground to diminish the weight of your leg on the actual thigh, or you can really let your body weight drop into that roller. Go ahead and pause, lift and lower the heel. Like I have a little bit of ribboning or what, what is called ropey kind of inner thigh muscle. Couple more, lift and lower. And last one, lift and lower. And just for the sake of being consistent, let's inner thigh, just pull that knee up and down. And exhale. Good, pause. Now coming up onto your forearms, I'm gonna move so you can see what's gonna happen here. I'm actually gonna go perpendicular to you for a second. I've got that positioning of that roller, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift yourself up and then walk yourself so that you cannot see the roller behind you anymore. And you're almost, your leg is almost straight. Your other knee is bent. You're on the upper part of your inner thigh now. So you're on the upper part of your inner thigh, not, and a little bit on the upper part of the quadriceps as well. And now you're rolling back and forth. Your other leg that's not on the roller at all is just bent on the ground and you're coming back and forth. Good. You want to make sure that the forearms are down and you're not just kind of flattening through the middle, but you're keeping your core a little bit engaged. So you're not putting any pressure onto your lower back. One more time, pressing. And then again, you're lifting and lowering the heel. Pick the heel up and put the heel back down. Pick the heel up and back down. One more time, pick the heel up and go back down. And then just go side to side, kind of like a windshield wiper. Just let that leg swing side to side. And this may just be a whole adventure in pain, or it could feel like nothing. My guess it's more painful than nothing. Good, pause and just let the tissue respond for a second. Drop into your back hip and roll off the roller for a second to give your body a chance also to recover. And then I'm gonna flip to the other side. You may need to also so that you can see me. And we're gonna do the whole thing again on the other side. So again, you're laying down nice and long. You've got your knees bent. The top head of the roller is in line with your nose. Your hand is right in front of your face. Move the roller away. Top knee goes over the top of the roller and you're gonna go in and out. Head, shoulders, and hips move together. Just allow that weight of that leg to go right over the roller so the shin is off of the, um, of the roller and it's just the inner thigh on the roller. A couple more. And just um, notice again what speed does. Speed is going to kind of hide the knee here or maybe even aggravate. So slow will help you connect deeper. Pause. And then again, lift the heel, lower the heel, lift the heel, lower the heel, lift the heel, and lower the heel. And then itch the inner thigh a little bit. Always kind of think of this kind of like, you know, you're tickling the dog's belly and the knee's going. But you can think of whatever you want to think of. And then pause and let the tissue respond. 
and then lift the knee up and we'll go up a little bit higher. So just take the roller a little bit up into the inner thigh. And then again, you're rolling over that roller. Your shoulder, your hip are working together. Your abdomen is kind of staying out of the way. You're letting your toe, if you need to, drop to the floor. It can either be an asset for you or it can kind of get in your way. Pause. And again, lift and lower that top heel. So we're getting into our shearing here. And then another shearing as you rub that inner thigh. Good, and then pause and let the tissue respond. And then again, we're coming up onto the forearm. I'm just gonna, again, I'm gonna move so you can see how the setup is. And you're gonna roll, so you're gonna move almost perpendicular to the roller. It's up deep up into your inner thigh. So we have this adductor magnus, this big inner thigh muscle way up into the hip. It's kind of into the groin, the iliacus, all these other muscles that are up there. And they get really tight sometimes, very dehydrated. They're part of the reproductive organ muscle area, also the elimination. And so they can get really problematic up there. So let that roller just, let that leg just sink into that roller. And it might be very tender or it may not be. Maybe more tender on one side than the other. Pause and again, lift and lower the knee or the, sorry, the foot. and then pause, and then just kind of swing the leg back and forth like it's a windshield wiper. And then pause again and let the tissue respond, and then lower down onto those arms and bring yourself all the way off. And then let's just do a real quick reassessment. Legs are out, shoulders are back, Arms are down by your side, chin towards your sternum. And just let your body settle. Now in this reassessment, of course, the direct change would maybe be pelvis, but also might be hamstring, and also might be feet feel more even. For me, the more evenness is in my feet. My um, right foot doesn't feel as dropped in towards the ground. I feel more evenly placed in my feet. I'm going to check that indirect change, my head to the right and to the left, and see where that's at. And then notice where my shoulder weight is. My shoulders feel settled still. Back arch seems a little bit elevated, but it could just be nervous system I'm trying to figure out what, just, what I just did to it because it's part of that deep core. And then let's slide the feet in, take the roller, and let's place it to the back of the legs for the, or the back of the thigh glide and shear. So I'm gonna start with the roller closer to my knees. I'm gonna in and out with those legs. And you can take the toes in, take the toes out, so that you can feel the pull of the muscle up against the, the bone. Yeah, you feel the muscle up against the roller, but I want you to feel that dragging of the muscle against the bone. Turn the knees out, turn the knees in. And breathe, work on not holding the breath, not resisting the movement. And then pause just for a second. And then let's just move the left leg in and out. Think of that length of movement. Can you drag the leg even further across the roller? And then let's pause with the, with the left leg and move the right. Roll in, roll out. And then pause and just let the legs respond. Slide the feet in so the shins are vertical. Take that roller out from underneath you and let's come all the way up to the upper back. So we're gonna do half back here. So make sure that you're coming, we'll set that roller up in the upper part of the back. You wanna make sure that the shoulder blades are almost on the roller and you can check by kind of packing those shoulders in, punching those arms out, making sure you're in the right position. A real easy thing to do is put too much weight back and really kind of strain the neck 
or push that head forward. So be gentle on the head. We're going to start with a rib length assessment. So lift the hips up, tuck the pelvis, and let the, let the rib wall sink. Let both hands come behind the head and hold that head back. So the chin isn't right up against the sternum. And you're just going to lay back until you feel the back start getting longer, not extended. You're not letting the pelvis move. Keep that pelvis down and breathe. Now, if you feel yourself tensing up, come up a little bit higher. Don't go that far over. And just breathe. Can you settle into that roller? Now, tilt yourself to one side. Either pick right or left and feel the opposite rib wall. Breathe. As I'm tilted to my left, I'm feeling my right rib wall open. And then back to center and then go to the other side. Open it. Place your hand even on that right rib wall and just notice if that feels like it's opening or real tight. One more time to each side, tilt over. Again, you're not crossing the midline, you're tilting around the midline of the body. And then two, drop to the left, but feel the right side open. And then let's come back up. And we're just gonna do just a little roll on the back, just two inches forward, two inches back. Your butt should be really be scuffing on the ground back and forth and then pause lift your hips up a little bit drop into your right hip drop your right knee and let your left knee be up keep your left hand behind your head and reach out with your right hand and begin to roll the shoulder just like when you would stand up right and you roll the shoulder you want to feel it way back underneath that scapula sitting at a desk a lot, sitting doing a puzzle, sitting doing phone dialing and zooming and whatever, can really wreak havoc on that upper back and shoulder. Pause, and then let's take that right elbow over the roller and then back. So it's a nice arcing motion. Elbow over the roller and back, and again over the roller and back. One more time, up and over the roller and back. Good, and then just take the hand behind the head, lift the hips up. I'm gonna turn to the other side so you can see me a little bit easier. Again, finding my placement first, then my hands behind my head. Lift the hips up, drop the left hip in, and then you're on that side. Reach the left arm out and begin to roll that shoulder. So single arm, half back, breathing. One or two more. Good, pause, reach out, take that left elbow up and over, right up and around that shoulder blade. So you're inside that shoulder blade. Your elbow is lifting, almost you can stir it back if you want to get a little bit magical with how that arm is moving. One more time, drop it up and over. Let's bring the hand back to center. Bring the hips back underneath you, tuck the pelvis, and find that rib length one more time so you can get a little bit more space. I did. Come back up, tilt to your right side, breathe into the left rib wall and center, and then tilt to the left side and breathe into the right side. Inhale, back to center, hold, and just let your back rest. Good. And then let's drop to one side. So we're gonna get on the length of the roller. We're gonna get into a rebalanced position on the roller. So you'll have the roller the, the length of your body. Hike up one cheek, bring yourself up onto the roller and gently lay back. Now beginning on the roller, you always wanna do that, that gentle rocking side to side. But remember for you, gentle rocking may be very still and calm. Eyes may just move right and left, body could move or whole body might be dropping right and left. Just easy to both sides. Now normally we do this rebalance at the beginning, but I wanted to do it at the end, but just to kind of see the difference for you to have some variation and variety in your movement patterning. So it's not always going to the same thing every single time, but you allow yourself to see things differently. Bring the challenge in differently. Allow the nervous system to come into movements differently. 
pause. And let's just tuck and tilt the pelvis, placing your thumbs right on the pelvis. Index fingers touching and tuck the pelvis in and tilt. Tuck and tilt and tuck and tilt. Pause, taking your right hand to your chest and breathe. Again, breathe to your rib cage, the lower part of your belly and your back. Avoid breathing high into your chest. Reach those arms out wide so their fingertips are just above your thighs and begin to take your left arm overhead and then right arm. So alternating those arms, reaching overhead. Soften, soften your jaw, soften your eyes, settle your feet. Bring your arms back into center. Cross the midline of your body with both arms. Reach around for your shoulder blades. Sink your chin into your sternum. Level your pelvis on the roller so you're not arched. A slight tuck, because as you come up, I want you to exhale and come up, and then re-level your pelvis. So you're taking that pelvis from a tuck to a tilt almost. As you've reached, as you've lifted up, take another breath, inhale, and then exhale, roll back. Inhale again, sink the chin, exhale, re-tuck the pelvis, lift the chest up a little bit higher, inhale, and exhale, lay back. Open the arms all the way out wide, close the arms again, hold with the other arm on top, sink the chin down towards the sternum, bring the pelvis in just a tiny bit, exhale, curl, now re-level the pelvis, inhale, Exhale, shh. Inhale, stay up. See if you can lift up a half inch more. Inhale, exhale, shh. And roll yourself all the way back. Take your arms out wide, down into a nice V position so your fingers are more like in an A frame. Inhale, reach deeper into that left arm. Turn your head to the, to the right shoulder and reach as you lengthen, feeling that from the neck or the upper and inner part of the ear all the way into the thumb, index finger, maybe pinky finger. Exhale, shh, reach through that left arm. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, shh. Inhale, bring your head center. Make sure your nose is pointing towards the sky. Reach through that right arm and look over your left shoulder. Get long from your ear to your finger. Shh. Reach into that right arm. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Shh. Inhale. Bring your head back to center. Release the arms back into the roller. <sighs> and settle. As you can, extend the right or left leg, roll off the roller, come all the way back on your back, extending the legs out, breathing, letting the arms drop to either side. Just letting the self, yourself just settle into the ground, chin in towards the sternum, arms back. Let the head drop, the feet drop, the shoulders. Beginning at the head, turn your chin towards your right and left shoulder. Taking your attention into your shoulders. Notice if your shoulders feel more it's settled into the ground, down to the base of the ribs. If that back arch is more even into the ground, pelvis is more level. Hamstrings might be touching the ground and feet feel like they're dropped out east and west. Take 
another focused breath and just thank yourself for doing this practice today. Noticing the spots that actually help to really connect you. Maybe it was when our hips were on the roller. Maybe it was the upper back. Maybe you can't remember and need some input. Slide your feet in so your shins are vertical. And then roll yourself gently to one side. Let's come on up and come all the way back to center. Nice 